Welcome back to the story of liberty. There is material for today's gospel in the star theory, and it comes from Francis Rolleston's extensive research during the early to mid 19th century. And in recent years, uh, starting back in the 80s, several organizations and prominent Christians, including D. James Kennedy and Kenneth Fleming and Marilyn Hickey, etc., uh, had promoted the gospel and the stars theory in books and sermons, and several of those are available to read and can be seen on many websites to promote the gospel and the star theory. Well, where do we begin? I, they all say that we begin with the Sphinx, which is a w Greek word to means to join together. You know, between the figures of Virgo the Virgin and Leo the Lion, there is carved the figure of the Sphinx with the head of a woman and the body of a lion. The woman's face is looking at the Virgin and the lion's tail is pointing at Leo, telling us that we begin with the Virgin and end with Leo. And these uh, Sphinx is found in a number of other great paintings of the Maserat around the Middle East for thousands of years. Um, if you painted the whole sky, for example, on the ceiling above you, you would have a basically a 360 degree circle. And this would, as it relates to the, the, the number of constellations, which are 12, the number of, let's say, sections to the constellations, there's 12 of them. So each one would be 1 12th of the constellation uh, of this zodiac. Now the word zodiac means circle of animals, so that's why you see animals in each one of those. And that's what we actually have, 12 major theses of which there's some minor points under each one. Let's look at a few of them. Virgo is a picture of a woman, and you could see that you will never see a woman. Uh, down through the ages, it, she's been called a woman, but there is no right resemblance to a, a woman. But Virgo, we know, does mean virgin in Latin and Hebrew. And so the first thing we must remember is the virginity of a woman. And the second thing we know is her fertility, her motherhood. She's holding a branch in her hand and a sheaf of corn. So we see that this could be obviously tied to scripture because Isaiah tells us, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. Concerning the branch, we read in Zechariah 3.8, For behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch. In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorified, Isaiah 4.2. So we see, and this is obvious in the first of the three minor constellations in the house of Virgo. One is, let's look at the one called Coma. It means desired to be desired, the long one. Well, the book of Haggai tells us that the, the desire of all nations shall come. Jesus Christ is the desire of all the nations who did come. Uh, also, we could see that there was the star of Bethlehem that was in the constellation Coma. And that I think we can conclude that this is indicating a virgin woman with the sun. Uh, in fact, the word for Coma in Egyptian means desired sun. So, in this first constellation, Virgo, we have a picture of a woman who is a virgin, who is going to bring forth a seed, who is to be called a branch, and he is the desire of the world, the nations, the desired son of God who was to come. Here we have what is called the first promised gospel, or the Proteangelium, the first gospel. Let's look at Libra. Libra is interesting, and we see that Libra uh, means the scales. Uh, Daniel, the book of Daniel 5.27, and tells us that when he spoke to Belshazzar, thou art weighed in the balances and found wanting. It's interesting that one of the stars in, um, in this uh, picture uh, in Arabic means the price deficient, uh, one of the stars in the scales. So it shows the failure of man um, 
to be condemned. Now, interesting, the good news is that the other star, which means the price which covers, the abundant one. So Christ is placed in the scales to bring us to present us to God clean in Libra. Interesting. Well, there's many others. Scor Scorpio is an interesting house of the zodiac. It's a picture of a great scorpion with a curled tail rising to strike. And Satan is described in many ways, including a scorpion. But just above this Scorpio is a strong man who is about to have his left heel stung by the tail of the scorpion. So his right foot is about to smash the head of the scorpion. And, of course, we know right there in the beginning of of scripture in Genesis 3.15, it shall bruise your head and thou shalt bruise his heel. That is the first gospel as we talked about. This is called in Hebrew the conflict, the war, this constant war between Christ and Satan. So there we have it in Scorpio. Sagittarius is interesting uh, because it is the, the body of a horse and the torso of a man with a drawn bow and arrow. And the Bible speaks of, in Revelation 6, 2, Then I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a, a bow, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Well, this is a picture, certainly one of the, of one that has two natures, a, the body of a horse and the torso of a man. So it's been said that this is the theantros, the, both man and God. Uh, which is the God-man, Christ the Lord. Let's go to Leo. We'll end with Leo for right now. And Leo the Lion, that's a picture of Christ who we know is called the Lion of the tribe of Judah, who is coming again. And he will come again. It will not be disguised in the uh, Bethlehem caravan or a baby in a manger, but he will come with all his power and glory. So, it appears that there is an art gallery of God that is painted in the sky. And I think it's worth all of us to go out on a given evening when it's clear up there and look at the starry skies. And maybe we could, each of us, be more impressed with the wonder of our God and the majesty of his creation. Um, it's a great thing to do. And let's remember what we should not do is look to the stars for answers. Horoscopes and looking in the paper to decide magically what your future is going to be or what to do and not to do is absolutely wrong.